Way to the New World – How China Will Transform Its Energy Economy For the last 30 years, rapid economic growth, based on heavy industry, manufacturing and construction, has been sustained by hydrocarbons. Coal, of course, remains dominant. What has changed is the volumes involved. In 1990, China used some 446 million tonnes of coal. Last year, the figure was 2.8 billion tonnes. In parallel, oil demand has grown with dramatic increase in car numbers. Oil consumption in 1980 was 2 million barrels per day, and for example last year it was 12 million barrels per day, making China the world's largest importer. But growth has come at a cost. China, as last year's announcements from the Global Carbon Project reminded us, is the largest single source of emissions and suffering badly from low-level pollution that covers many cities in smog. President Zhang Xiaoping has promised dramatic change, an energy revolution to make the skies blue again. The rhetoric is great, but are the promises deliverable? A comprehensive study of the Chinese energy market, published last year by part of the International Energy Agency's New World Outlook, is a great place to start for anyone wanting to understand what is happening and what may happen next. The high-level facts are remarkable. China consumes 25% of the energy used globally every day. Coal continues to dominate Chinese energy use in industry, power generation and heating, providing almost two-thirds of total demand. In renewables, China is the world's leading producer of wind and solar power. Advances in technology and production efficiency have cut costs and made the country the dominant supplier of solar panels to the rest of the world. China is also building dozens of new nuclear plants, more than a third of the global total. Its nuclear industry is developing its own reactor technology, aiming to create a world-class export industry. The country also leads the global electric vehicle industry. Of the estimated 2 million electric vehicles on the world's roads today, at least 40% will be in China. Each of these facts reflects a dramatic change in the last 10 to 15 years, but they are not themselves the end point. Last year's party congress in Beijing endorsed the latest plan, a sweeping statement of intent entitled the Energy Production and Consumption Revolution Strategy. The plan described a transformation of the whole energy sector over the next decade and a half. The share of non-fossil fuels will rise to 15% by 2020 and 20% 20 by 2030, meeting most if not all of the incremental demand. By 2030, 80% of all remaining coal-fired power stations will have ultra-low emissions as the old capacity is retired. The high-level target is to ensure that emissions peak by 2030, with a long-term goal for 2050 being to reduce the share of fossil fuels to less than half the total and to replace the whole system onto leading-edge energy technologies. History suggests it's unwise to underestimate China's ability to deliver on its plans, but in this case there are good reasons for doubt. Infrastructure and market structures are needed to support the changing energy mix. As the IEA analysis makes clear, the absence of infrastructure and a support regulatory regime already limit the potential impact of natural gas. The same problems could constrain wind and solar. Electric vehicle numbers are growing, but the odds are still that the bulk of electricity they use will be produced from coal for a long time to come. In addition, in a country of over a billion people, industrial changes have to be managed. In coal and the major manufacturing sectors, many workers, and indeed whole communities, remain dependent on activities likely to be transformed or eliminated by new technology. The target of 80% net self-sufficiency is probably achievable, but with the combination of coal, new nuclear and renewables including hydro. But the remaining 20% involves the critical supply of oil where import dependence has more than doubled in the last five years. On the IEA's estimate, China will need to invest $6.1 trillion or $250 billion a year on energy supply between now and 2040, two-thirds of which will go into the power sector, and another $2.1 trillion, or $90 billion a year, will also be needed to deliver the required gains in energy efficiency. China is the dominant force in the global energy market. Energy also matters to the survival of the Chinese regime, and a sustained improvement in living standards over the last three decades has helped to keep the Communist Party in power. That would not have been possible if the energy system had not been adopted to meet the growing demand in what is now a consumer society. The iron rice bowl now extends beyond employment and food to mobility and increasingly demand for a cleaner environment. As ever, 
energy, power and politics are inseparable.